Okay guys, today we are going to talk about lasers. This is one of my favorite subjects. And in fact, I even found a paper that I wrote about this back in fourth grade. Now, lasers have come a long way since then, and they are really profound in the healthcare system. And I'm going to share a lot of really important and helpful details with you today. Guys, I'm Dr. Tim with Optimize Wellness Center. We're gonna be talking about photobiomodulation, low level light therapy or LLLT and lasers. Now lasers is in fact actually an acronym and it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The term photobiomodulation is really a catch-all broad term that describes any utilization of light as a way of stimulating tissue. And this could include things like LEDs, as well as any kind of uh, heat generating laser or light therapy. But not all of these are equal and arguably shouldn't be bunched together. Now, LLLT, low level light therapy, speaks to a specific kind of light therapy where it's using a low frame of laser or light uh, stimulation and we're going to focus on that today. Lasers are a non-invasive FDA cleared therapy that helps to mitigate pain and inflammation as well as increasing your range of motion and it facilitates what's called as neuronal connectivity, connecting one neuron to another neuron and cleaning up that pathway so that there can be proper communication. Think of it as a calculator, but a calculator that precisely does a subtraction of pain. And so if we can use this appropriately, we can eliminate or reduce the pain patterns and even how pain sometimes feeds itself in a cyclic way. And we can cut that pathway so that we can eliminate that altogether. Now, it stimulates the body in the same way that drugs do, but without side effects or complications, without pills, without surgery. And cold or low level lasers do not have a thermal effect on the tissue. And this is really critical. And we're gonna talk about that more in a moment. Since my fourth grade paper, there has been 10,000 published studies and not one of them have mentioned any negative side effects of semiconductor diode lasers at around a five millivolts uh, like their conia lasers that we use in office. This happens to be one of them, but actually we have in fact several different uh, Arconia products in our office and lasers for different purposes. There are different theories about aging, but one of the most widely accepted theories on aging is due to the overproduction of free radicals and the decreased amount of antioxidant defenses available. Now, why is this important? Well, lasers are a source of energy and that energy in particular is called a photon. And these are really just packets of energy that are flying around anywhere where we have this laser and or light generation. Now, the laser literature frequently measures laser energy in joules, yet joules are way too large and really in an inappropriate way of measuring the energy of a photon. It's kind of like measuring your shoe size in miles. And so it wouldn't be that helpful because we would have to use an extrapolation to make it relevant. Now, visible light facilitates a photochemical transformation. This is where the body's form of photosynthesis occurs. We absorb that light through our tissue or through our eyes or through any other part of our body, transcranially, etc. And this was discovered by Albert Einstein. Now, laser light, visible light in this instance, is absorbed by the mitochondrial photoreceptors and it facilitates an enhancement to our metabolism and healing. Now, this is really critical because <clears throat> we can absorb that specific kind of light in through these specific receptors and the mitochondria, as maybe you recall, is really like the powerhouse to our, um, it's in, in our bodies and it generates something called ATP. So these mitochondrial powerhouses produce around 90% of the energy that our body needs to function via that ATP, the unit of energy. 
anything that compromises ATP production could harm or kill cells. And in this instance, think of things like heat. Anything that improves the flow of electrons within the cells will increase ATP production while reducing free radicals and free radical damage. Light absorption, in particular laser light absorption, increases ATP production and even small changes in ATP production can have a significant effect. Elevated ATP energy increases the rate of DNA synthesis. So the summary to the story, guys, is when we use lasers, we can absorb that light and specifically through the mitochondria, we can produce more energy and we heal bigger, better, stronger, faster. But of course, there is a paradox and this is within the mitochondria. Now, while they are a major producer of ATP, this energy, but they also are a major producer of free radicals. As the mitochondria produce ATP energy that our body requires to be able to function, the mitochondria also produce these free radicals as a byproduct that could damage and age our bodies. Yet, interestingly enough, lasers increase the mitochondrial production of ATP without increasing the production of free radicals. Anything that increases the production of ATP energy will speed the healing and improve your symptoms. So lasers have numerous other salubrious effects. Notably, these could also include things like the increased uh, production of acetylcholine or ACH. And in this instance, think about it as like a food for the vagus nerve. I encourage you to check out our other vagus nerve video to get more insights specific to that. It also increases the production of nitric oxide. And so think of this in terms of improving our vascular capacity and our cardiometabolic uh, capacity. Now, light is able to increase ATP synthesis, resulting in healthier cell vitality and longevity. This is the summary that you guys really need to take away. It is super important, relevant to how lasers are functioning. Now, who could benefit from utilizing a laser? Well, it could include folks who have things like acute or chronic musculoskeletal pain, inflammation or edema. They're trying to deal with wound healing of skin ulcers or infections or burns or dermatitis or other kinds of scars. What about individuals with autoimmune conditions or they need some brain balancing and how the different lobes and areas of the brain are functioning and communicating with each other? Are there excuse me, blood related illnesses? It acts as a magnet to the blood and creates vasodilation, meaning those blood vessels open up and dilate so that we can get more nutrients and oxygen through those vessels. What about individuals who maybe are larger and have excessive weight? In this instance, we can utilize lasers to target those fat cells and facilitate body contouring. And then there's other things like headaches and migraines or carpal tunnel syndrome or sciatica or brain fog or smoking cessation. The list goes on and on, but these are a few of the big hitters where people could really benefit from utilizing cold laser therapy. We also utilize it with our athletes, professional athletes, as well as weekend warriors, where it's a sports medicine and rehab dealing with swelling and tendinitis and hematomas and pain, increasing range of motion, as well as recovering from injury. Injuries. Or think about individuals with chronic conditions like arthritis, uh, as well as issues in their cartilage where they may have neuropathies or nerve or disc pain in their knees, shoulders, wrists, neck, and back. All of those can be addressed and ameliorated through lasers as a mechanism to be able to facilitate that healing. The American Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation found that the 632 nanometer low power laser is the most common wavelength used in therapeutic light sources, enhancing the protein production in arthritic joints and repairing arthritic cartilage. This is super important, guys. This is a really powerful statement and it can help so many individuals who are dealing with arthritis and swelling or other kind of pain patterns in their joints. Urconia lasers, in particular the kinds of lasers that we use at Optimized Wellness Center, was the first company to receive what's called as a 510K from, uh, from the FDA. Now, 
its laser has 60% greater ability to be able to improve pain and range of motion as compared with placebo controls. This is how they won their first FDA approvals was showing this 60% gain over these placebos. Now, notably the placebos that they have consistently used in each and every one of their studies is LEDs. You will see many LEDs in the market today and so it warrants uh, some discussion about this. So what is the difference between a laser and an LED or a light emitting diode? Well, lasers are what's called as monochromatic. This means there is a single color wavelength. They are also collimated, and this means that the, the light is in a very precise column and it is not diverging as well as coherent. And this means that the wavelengths are in phase. And it's also visible light, meaning that it's photochemical in terms of its reaction. So let me just show you what that looks like for a moment here so that you'll get an idea of what I'm saying. So I'm going to attempt to shine this light uh, on the board here. You can see that these are very precise um, very thin pieces of light on there. And even as I step further away from this, it remains to be very tightly focused on these areas. Now they are blinking. Uh, one of them is blinking in a specific pattern dealing with its frequencies. So you can see what I'm referring to earlier about being monochromatic, collimated, as well as coherent light. All right. So let's talk about, well, what about LEDs? Okay, so LEDs are neither co uh, coherent or collimated, and they generate a broader band of wavelengths or a multitude of wavelengths that result in photons moving in random directions at random times, generating random frequencies, which is an inefficient utilization of the light if you're trying to get a therapeutic outcome and are a source of infrared light and have a photophysical effect, not a photochemical effect. Well, why do these things matter to you? Well, all right, so here we go. A major difference is are in performance and depth of penetration. The peak power output of a laser is measured in watts, while for an LED, it's measured in milliwatts. Also, LEDs usually have what's called as a 50% duty cycle. Now, this means that they're on for about 50% of the time and they're off 50% of the time, regardless of what frequencies it may be using. So they could say that it is the same frequencies that's being utilized here, but they're only working essentially 50% of the time. Albert Einstein first established that wavelengths below the 400 nanometers, like X-rays as an example, have so much energy, high wattage is what we're talking about here, that they eject electrons away from atoms. This is called ionization. In even small dosages, it can damage the tissue and could even cause cancer. That's why it's very concerning as to how many x-rays you get in a relative period of time. Well, so let's talk about high-powered lasers. Okay, so un unlike high-powered lasers that use heat to destroy tissues, low-energy lasers affect the cellular energy of the underlying tissue. All lasers above 500 milliwatts are considered to be topical heat lamps by the FDA, and their thermal effects result in calcium excitotoxicity, ultimately leading to what's called as a peroxynitrite damage to DNA. As of May of 2019, devices with substantial equivalence to topical heating of temporary relief of minor pain no longer need an FD, uh, 510K clearance. Every light source can make an unsubstantiated claim that their device works on pain based on this. Hence, buyer beware as it relates to what you're looking for and what you're trying to get and how it will be used. Heat generating lasers, those with high power, cannot touch the skin for long periods of time, have to constantly be moving, and will generally only work on the surface level tissue by heating it up in some of the positive insalubrious effects associated with heating that tissue. 
typically around um, softening it, increasing range of motion, and some pain mitigation potentially. But you will get greater salubrious or health benefits when it can penetrate deeper and we can provide more healing to that tissue. <clears throat> So often we get the question, well, how long are laser treatments? Well, treatments can vary in time from seconds to minutes depending upon the condition. Research studies show that they are dose-dependent response and therefore more effective to treat at a lower dose at multiple intervals than to treat a single time with a higher dose. Typically between 4 and 12 treatments are necessary to begin the healing process of that tissue, although in some instances people find relief immediately from the utilization of cold laser as we are describing here today. Some of the benefits would include things like pain relief. It's been documented that these Arconia lasers can um, <clears throat> create a 60 plus percent reduction in pain. And this analgesic uh, reduction is both in the central nerve system, brain and spinal cord, as well as the peripheral nerve system. It also increases range of motion, and this is extremely important in preventing progressive degenerative joint and disc diseases. And this facilitates what's called as mechanoreception as well as uh, systemic neurology and neurologic improvements. It strengthens the immune system by increasing lymphocytic, uh, lymphocytic excuse me, activity. It also speeds up healing time by 30 to 50%. It regenerates damaged nerve tissue. This is relevant to action potentials and neuroplasticity, and it stimulates neurogenesis as well as a variety of other nerve factors. It releases myofascial restrictions, increasing our range of motion, as well as restoring muscle strength relevant to action potentials within those muscles in the fibrils. It increases ATP production, as we discussed earlier, which is what's called as mitochondrial upregulation, as well as increasing cytochrome C oxidase. And this dramatically increases the mitochondrial output, protecting against mitochondrial damage, and even promotes mitochondrial bio biogenesis, meaning we're producing more mitochondria, decreases edema and inflammation, as well as inhibiting what's called as the COX enzymes in eicosanoids. Basically, we get some of that through certain COX enzymes and pathways, and this helps to limit that. There's also been proven to be a 6 to 14% faster healing of wounds, certain kinds of wounds with these zirconia lasers. It also increases blood flow in particular to the brain and promotes that ATP production upstairs. It protects and repairs what's called as the blood-brain barrier as well as the gut barriers. So we have certain kinds of barriers that protect these really vital tissues. So we have a brain upstairs and we have what's called as a second brain or um, our enteric nerve system in our gut. And this can help to improve the integrity of that as well as the bi-directional communication, in particular through what's called as the vagus nerve. And notably in this instance, it improves what's called as vagal tone or vagus nerve stimulation for the parasympathetic nerve system. <coughs> All right, guys, that was a lot of information. But of course, there's always individuals who want to ask, are there any contraindications that might prevent me from being able to benefit from the utilization of using cold laser? Well, there's over 10,000 published studies in no known or published adverse effects utilizing low-level laser therapy. Low-level lasers are safe, non-toxic, and non-invasive. However, since there are no long-term uh, um, evaluations of certain kinds of conditions, therefore some common sense precautions should be considered, like not shining the light directly into your eye for a long period of time. Um, and it also might not be recommended for individuals who are pregnant or a person with a pacemaker. So some of you neuro geeks might be asking me about, well, what is uh, the mechanism of action? So biohackers, here we go, guys. 
Okay, so we talked about the fact that there have been around 10,000 studies, so there's lots of detailed information in here. Don't get too bogged down with some of the nuanced details, but enhanced ATP production and synthesis, proving to provide more energy. It stabilizes the cell membrane for cell protection. It stabilizes, uh, excuse me, stimulates the vasodilation, increasing nitric oxide, serotonin, as well as the removal of debris. It accelerates leukocytic activity for immune repair and regeneration, increases prostaglandin synthesis for an anti-inflammatory effects. It also reduces interleukin-1, which helps with RA, rheumatoid arthritis, and other inflammatory conditions. This is super important. It also increases the angiogenesis, meaning that our capillaries in the lymphatic tissue gets regenerated. There's a temperature modulation. Basically, it limits the increased temperature associated with inflammation. It enhances what's called a superoxide dismutase, or SOD levels, which also helps to limit uh, inflammation. It de decreases C-reactive protein in um, neoprotein levels. It increases beta endorphins. It increases the nitric oxide, as we mentioned earlier, as well as decreasing bradykinin levels. It increases ion channel normalization. It blocks in de uh, the depolarization of C fibers that are afferent or ascending up into the, the brain. And this means that we cut the pathway going from pain in the body up to the brain. It also increases cell action potentials, increases the release of acetylcholine, think the vagus nerve, and axonal sprouting and nerve regeneration. Whew, wow, that was a lot. So in short, these lasers are super powerful. We can apply them to the tissue, through clothing, transcranially. You can apply them to pets, humans, aliens. Uh, anyone could benefit from the utilization of a laser except for those few individuals that we talked about earlier. Guys, I'm so glad that you stuck out to the end of this video. Thanks for taking the time to listen in. If you like to press the like button, make sure to subscribe to our channel and check in for the latest videos and share this information with family and friends who might benefit from this as well. Thanks for checking in. Dr. Tim with Optimize Wellness Center.